In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create dynamic document templates in DocuSign when your documents look like this offer letter. This template will save you time because you won't have to drag and drop your DocuSign field on the document each time you want to send a document for signature. But dynamic document templates don't work like static templates, which is the topic of the previous videos. So let's first agree on the difference between a static and a dynamic template. A static template is when the layout of the document looks like this. It's called static because it has predefined locations for the text that needs to be entered in the form and that location does not change. So this is where you would want to write information in the form if you were to fill this out with your pen. And we call these locations for the text to be entered fields. There's a reasonable amount of space for the text to be entered and whatever text gets entered in the document will not affect the static text to move further down or to the side. In dynamic structures, however, like this offer letter, the character length of the variable, like this position title, might vary. For example, if the position title is sales representative, that's 20 characters. But if the position title was account manager, that would be 15 characters. That means that there will be too much or too little white space between the static text, which is this part, and this part and the dynamic text, which is in yellow. And so that if you start using a static template on a dynamic document, your document will end up looking like this. There will always be too much white space or too little white space. And this is what you can see here. What we want to happen instead is for the static text that surrounds the dynamic text to wrap around the dynamic text so that the documents actually look like this. This is what we want. But it's not just about a cosmetic issue. It's also about the placement of the signature fields because in dynamic document structures, if we were to add an additional paragraph or if the position title of, of the role that we were hiring for were to cause the following text to be pushed by one line, what will happen? Well, those signature fields here will need to move because the signature lines will have to move. And this is the second issue that dynamic document templates solve. They will place the signature fields automatically in the right location every time. And all of this is explained in my DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet, and you can download it using the link in the description just down below. And if you're wondering who I am, my name is Sofian Saudi. I'm an ex-DocuSign staff and implementation consultant and founder of SolusSign Consulting, where we help organizations save time by implementing DocuSign for them. We take care of building the template, setting up the account, and all the integrations that automate the workflow. If you're interested in getting our help to implement DocuSign, you'll find the link in the description of the video to book a consultation with myself or one of our automation consultants. But for now, let's go back to the tutorial. So to build our dynamic template, we'll have to go through the following steps. First, we will need to create a word based template, right? So a template that you first create outside of DocuSign, then we will add the signature field inside of that template, which will set up in DocuSign. And then we will configure something called auto place so that the signature fields are always located in the right spot. And finally, we will test the template. Now there are two subcategories within the dynamic templates. We've got the document generation template, which can also act as an overlay template. Document generation template means that DocuSign is able to use your word based template to create the documents using their own servers and then they will also overlay the fields on top of that document they have. The overlay template, however, by itself cannot do document generation. Overlay template is simply the fact that the fields get added to the document automatically. The document generation template is much better because it does overlay. However, which dynamic template you can use depends on the plan that you have with DocuSign. So if you're on a business pro subscription or under, you do not get access to document generation, but you do get access to overlay. So if you're on business pro or under, then you'll have to create your document outside of DocuSign, so in Microsoft Word or Google Docs, for example, and then you'll upload it to DocuSign and we will apply the overlay template on top of that, which will place the signature fields for you. But if you are on an enterprise plan, then you have the option to purchase the document generation add-on, which costs about 20 cents per document that you generate on top of the cost of the envelope. I'll get into this in a more detailed video about DocuSign pricing, but for now, know that if you're on an enterprise plan, you can go with document generation. If you're not an enterprise, you will have to go with simply overlay, which doesn't 
include document generation. Now, there are two ways you can create the word-based template, which is the basis on which we can build the DocuSign template. To create your document generation template, you need to start with a word-based document like this one. So I'm going to be using this as the basis for the template. So I'm going to replace all the personal information here with placeholders for the variable information. So this will become salutation, this will become candidate first name, candidate last name, candidate address line one, city, state, and zip. And then I'm going to do the same thing inside of this body of text here. And to do that, I can either upload this document inside of DocuSign and add the placeholders there, or I can do that directly in Microsoft Word. I personally like to use Microsoft Word because I find it easier to work with and it doesn't break any of the formatting. But if you do want to do that directly in DocuSign, let me show you how this can work. So we go to templates, envelope templates, create a template. You obviously name your templates, so employment offer, and then you're going to upload your employment offer document and then you're going to add your recipient so my recipient is the candidate and then we have another recipient and that's the hr manager who needs to countersign this document so now i'm going to set a signing order so that the candidate signs first and a hr manager signs second now i'm going to click on next and then we will be able to add our merge field so here what i want to do is replace this with some with salutation so I'm going to delete this and then I'm going to go to the sender field and add a new field and I'm going to call this salutation and I want this to be a text field and I want this to be required. Now I'm going to do the same thing for this and add another field and call this candidate first name and that also is required and I'm going to do the same thing for all my fields moving forward. This is how you configure the variable fields and when you will be using the template once the template is configured correctly and, and finalized when you click on use to use your template and to send it then you'll have a form to fill out which will include the list of all the fields that you've created here and upon filling out this form the document will be generated and then the workflow will start. So the form will be sent to the candidate and then to the HR manager. Now, let me show you why I don't like to build a template this way. It's because when we go to add the signer field, so what the candidate actually needs to do, so whether it's entering text or sign, then let me show you what happens. So if I want to add my candidate signature here, I want the signature to be on that line. If I do this, it like I'm not able to position this exactly where I want. It's kind of where I want, but it's also not where I really want it. And so my documents are not going to look as nice. And so if I want to do the same thing for the HR now, I'm going to have a hard time replicating the exact, the exact position. And while that looks like it's not a big issue, as you can see here, my line is broken. And here my line isn't broken. And that's why I don't like using this template builder. This is the new template builder inside of DocuSign. I much rather add your two curly brackets and call this salutation. And same thing here, that will be candidate first name. Actually, it's better to do it like that. So you can actually read the names, the fields easier. And then I just upload this inside of DocuSign. And as you can see that it says document generation. This is because DocuSign can see that there are fields correctly formatted. And this is just following the DocuSign syntax. So you need to place your variables between two curly brackets. So I'm going to grab my signature field for the employee and I'm going to grab my name and I'm going to grab my date. And you see DocuSign is warning me the content may shift. So you need to use auto place to ensure fields retain the correct position. And we'll take, out, take care of that in a minute. Let me just finalize this template quickly. So now I'm adding the fields for the HR. You should already know how to add fields on the documents by now, if you're watching this specific video. So I'm going to click on save and close, click on my employment offer template and click use. I'm going to add myself as the candidate and as the HR. And if I click next, I'm going to be asked to provide information to replace the variable text by the actual value. So let's just say you can see the value gets replaced. And this is only available in the document generation template. Now, the problem is it's very easy to make a mistake. And so the formatting of whatever information gets entered here really relies on the, the human who is actually entering the information if the template is not integrated. So I'm not going to build all the fields as placeholders because you understand what needs to be done. Now, what we need to do, though, is to auto place the fields. Auto place will help DocuSign know exactly where the fields need to go to, even if the signature block moves to the following page or gets moved up for some reason. So what you can do here 
is to click on the field that you want to automatically place. So in our case, there'll be all these fields, but we can only do this on a field by field basis and then click on location and auto place. Now DocuSign is asking us to provide them with a word or a string of text that is uniquely present on the document and that is as close as possible to where the field should actually go to. And so in my case, I want to use a field that's in the signature block. So it's hidden here. Actually, you don't see this, but this is a table. And in my table, just above my table, actually, I've got this text in white. And so if I make this black for a second, this is just some random anchor text. An anchor text is the string of word that DocuSign will use to know exactly where to place the fields in relation to that anchor. So if we were to add another two or three paragraphs here, you see that this text here doesn't move location in relation to where we want the fields to go to. And this is why this is an anchor. You always want your anchor to be as close as you can to the signature fields. And ideally you want it in the table of the signature block. I didn't bother because I know what I'm doing, but ideally you would want this to be in the actual table. Now, this is also in my document, but it's in white. So you can't see it, but DocuSign can. So if I actually copy this and paste it here, DocuSign will place that field exactly where that anchor is. And it's looking for it now. There you go. And I just need to repeat the operation for all my fields. And then once I've done that for all my fields, I will tell DocuSign how many pixels away from that anchors I want my fields to go. So let me just do that quickly. So now DocuSign has made a connection between the anchor text and the field that I'm adding. My job now is simply to position those fields correctly and DocuSign will remember how many pixels from the left and how many pixels from the top I want those fields to be away in relation to the anchor. I'm going to align my fields so that my document looks good. I shouldn't need to do this for the demo, but I have OCD, so I really need my documents to look always super nice. Anyway, not gonna bother with this. That really is it. So I'm gonna click on save and close, and now we'll do a quick text. So let's just say that I want to use this template. And if you're on an enterprise plan, you will obviously get the, uh, the option to generate the document directly in here. So technically, I've now added two paragraphs. So the document will be very long. We'll need to check now that the signature fields have followed the right location for the anchor. Oh, date sign didn't follow correctly. And that's because I did not ask the word to prevent the table from being broken. So my rows, I shouldn't have allowed allow rows to be broken across pages. And by doing this, if I replace this inside of my template, then the entire signature block will be will move to the next line. We can actually do a test because if I add more data now that should cause the information to move to the, to the signature block to move to the next page. And so as you can see, the signature fields are located in the right position. Now, this is if you have an, an enterprise subscription, right? We will close that template and we will just add information in this document and we'll pretend that you don't have an enterprise subscription. So now we have created our own document inside of Microsoft Word. And what we want to do is upload this document into DocuSign. So I'm going to click save that document here and call it Business Pro after filled out for Business Pro. This is if you have a Business Pro subscription or under. And instead of starting with the templates tab, I'm going to go to agreements and start envelope, send an envelope. And now I'm going to upload my document. So that's this one. And now DocuSign should recognize this document and try to match it with a template. Template matching is a topic for another day. I'm not going to get into this. So if you don't see that pop up, you can click cancel. But if you do see the template that you want to apply on top of that document, you can click on apply directly. I'm not going to click on apply because sometimes it doesn't show up for some reasons that I'm not going to get into today. So I'll show you how to add the template manually. So what we've done now is we've created our document and we've uploaded inside of DocuSign. And what we want is we want to retain this document that we have uploaded, but we want to use the template to apply the recipient workflow and the fields on top of that document, but without replacing the document that we've just uploaded with the document that's in the template, if that makes sense. So we're going to click on the three dots and apply template. And I'm going to look for my employment offer templates. I'm going to click on apply selected. And now, as you can see, my candidate and my HR have been added to my workflow. I just need to add their name and their email. And then I'm going to click next. And here I should be prompted to, I mean, I should see that my signature fields 
are added in the right location and that's the case obviously i here i'm seeing my anchor because i forgot to hide it by making it again white but here is how it works and i can just send my document and that's it setting up template and using template is definitely what you want to do with docusign as a first step but it's not going to help you with creating the document automatically or with all the steps that happen after the document needs to be signed all the documents need to be created sent tracked signed and stored and using template you're not saving that much time in the end because you still have to take care of all the things that happen before the signature and all the things that happen after the signature and that's why what you should aim for is to integrate the templates in your system so that the information can go from your system into the templates automatically as i've explained in previous videos using templates only provides you with 20 percent of time savings if you compare this with your standard manual document workflows if you really want to save time you need to automate more than just the signature part you need to automate what happens before and what happens after the signature and the way that you can save all of this time is using integration with integration you can save 100 percent of the time you spend on document workflows or at least super close to that and that's why i'm recommending that you watch this video next because it's going to show you what is possible when you integrate your templates and how can you actually use integrations to save all that time if you want our help to build your templates your integrations you can use the link in the description of the video to book a consultation with myself or one of our automation consultants during the call the consultant will help you automate the document workflow by looking at all the things that you do and looking at how can this be automated i will see you in the next one until then happy signing ciao